welcome back to ThinkTech. It's one o'clock. It's Community Matters. I'm Jay Fidel, and the other fellow is Gordon uh, Pang. And Gordon Pang is a writer for the Star Advertiser now, but he's been writing for the newspaper, one or the other. You got to tell me exactly how long, Gordon, but it's been a long, long time, a lifetime even. We don't, we don't, we don't have to get into how long. <laughs> okay. Let's just, say, let's just say before some of the new reporters were born. How's that? There it is. Okay. You look remarkably well. What can I say? Thank Must you. be doing the right thing, staying alive. It's very important now. Um, the other thing Gordon does, I mean, that I'm familiar with is the Gridiron Show, uh, but we're not going to talk about that today. Suffice to say, he is hysterical on the Gridiron Show and it demonstrates the real Gordon. And I hope it comes back soon so you can all enjoy the real Gordon again. <laughs> yeah, we're still trying to figure out uh, what's going to happen this year, I think. Yeah. So you've been writing up a storm on the city. You know, uh, you've been writing on gee, so many, so many issues on the city. Let's try to take some of them and, uh, you know, you can give us a handle on, on priorities and on possibilities. Uh, even if you like on opinions and if you want to, if you don't want to give opinions, then I will. <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> Let's talk about the prosecutor's office. You know, Steve Amma's in there now or will be on January 2nd. And uh, query, you know, where are we? Because, you know, the public is still shaking his head. What went on there? Uh, and are we safe? You know, the old marathon man question, are we safe? Uh, or is the prosecutor's office just uh, completely fragmented and not, not functional? Tell us about it. Well, uh, as you're aware, you know, uh, the uh, city of the, the, the office of the city auditor recently came out with a, uh, a report on the Department of the Prosecuting Attorney, which is also known as the prosecutor's office by a lot of folks. Um, members of the city council, right, in November 2019, ordered this audit along with one of the police department in the wake of the scandal involving the Kealohos, who, of course, were convicted of corruption. Um, by the way, both audit, before I say anything else, both audits are up before the City Council's Executive Matters and Legal Affairs Committee tomorrow morning at uh, 10 a.m., I believe. Um, and uh, so, you know, folks can listen in then to hear what the auditor has to say. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if the prosecutors or the police department are gonna show up, but, uh, but uh, you know, I'm sure questions will be asked. Good. So, um, you know, you, you asked specifically about the prosecuting attorney's office. Um, and clearly the auditor could see that the, not very much has been done by the department um, to address some of the key issues that have arisen since the uh, Aloha case uh, first came about. Um, the audit focused on several key areas, uh, conflict of interest situations, the supervising of its staff attorneys and the handling of internal complaints. Um, for me, the most stunning uh, part of, of, of the auditor's report was this common theme that there seems to be just in general, in general, a lack of consistent policy or guidelines in many of these areas. I mean, you know, this office wasn't created yesterday or even eight years ago, which suggests that uh, some of these problems pre predate Keith Kaneshiro. Um, so, the audit spoke about how the department relied on uh, self-disclosure to deal with conflicts of interest charges. Um, on the face of that, that, that sounds kind of shocking. You know, uh, you're basically asking the fox to guard the hen house. But that said, it, it's just not an easy problem to fix. Because um, even if you've got someone whose sole job is to maybe root out the conflicts, it, it's, it's hard to find out the, uh, the different types of relationships your attorneys might have with the, the people that you know they're interacting with, either as clients or, or or the victims, and you know, especially as we all know and know even more as we get older, you know, this is a really small island. Um, so you know, conflicts abound everywhere. Um, now the department conceded its administrative policy lacked detail on what constituted a conflict. Uh, or what procedures were to be taken when a conflict is identified. Um, but they said that since September, the policy now uh, outlines what cases are deemed to be a conflict. Um, I'm not sure why it took decades 
the conviction of one of its top deputies, and then finally this audit to get there. But uh, you know, they've 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 changed somewhat now. Um, as for what else can be done, again, it, it's just tough to root out this stuff. Um, my uneducated suggestion might be just to have a bigger checklist of of, of questions. You know, uh, I mean, I just took a hepatitis vaccination shot yesterday, and they asked me like three pages worth of questions I needed to answer before they let me take the shot. Um, so maybe the attorneys need to have a longer checklist of, of this sort too. I mean, given the workload that they have, and, and they, this was cited by the uh, prosecutors in their response, given the workload, you know, this may be difficult and slow things down even further, but maybe that just needs to happen if we're gonna root out this stuff. Yeah. Question so far? <clears throat> yeah, well, let me just sort of comment at, at this point. So Steve Ahm is a, is a possible uh, fix. Um, and he was a judge, he's uh, hopefully untouchable and he can get in there and, and um, you know, fix it. Um, but, but query in an ideal sense, I mean, I guess the city council should look at this. Uh, the city council should likewise uh, enlist Steve Ahm and he should enlist them and they should get in there and clean it up. And I, I think the, uh, and, and you are very important in writing about this because for us to have, most of us to have a, a sense of confidence about city government, we have to be confident of the police. We have to be confident of, of the prosecutor's office. And right now they're tarnished. And the more you think about it, uh, the, the more uncomfortable you become with a city that, that can't seem to enforce the law and can't seem to prosecute those who need to be prosecuted, especially at a time when my belief, you, you can probably confirm this, is that there's more crime. There's more crime because our economics are lousy and people are out of work and they're on the street. I mean, you know, we get, get that neighbor, that neighbor uh, social media thing that goes around, tells you all about the neighbor next door. And uh, you know, there's so much is being reported about break-ins and accostations and, and purse stealing and, and on and on and on. You say, well, these people are in dire straits, they do crime. And if that's so, we need the police to be on it. We need the prosecution to be on it. Um, so you know, what, what, who should step forward on this first? Is it Steve Ahm? Is it the new mayor? Is it city, city council? And it's, of course, is it you, Gordon? <laughs> well, I, I think you know, know what the answer is going to be. You've been around. It's going to have to take everybody. And uh, the fact that we have a new uh, majority in the city council, you know, five new members, I, no one can remember the last time a majority of uh, members of the council just suddenly came in and moved out, you know, five others. Uh, probably never, at least not since there have been nine council members. Um, You've got a new mayor, uh, and of course you have a new prosecutor. So, you know, you've got all those uh, pieces in place. Um, they've all promised to, to to root out corruption and and uh, clean up government, and of course that 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 the uh, big buzzword transparency, right? They they all promise transparency in government. So, uh, and I guess that's where folks like like, you know, the reporters, uh, including myself and. Uh, Christina Jedra, who kicks butt for Civil Beat, and, and other folks need to need to come in and uh, uh, make sure that the, they're held accountable. Yeah. Uh, I think they, uh, you're you're having me jump to the the end of my my four pages of notes here. Um, the uh, the auditor recommended that outside of what the prosecutor's office could do, the uh, the city council can establish a commission on prosecutorial conduct to evaluate the prosecutor annually. Um, because right now, you know, no one does that. The only thing that uh, holds a prosecutor accountable is um, running for reelection. Um, so really the, the only people the prosecutor answers to is the, the voting public every four years. And that's a problem, you know, that there needs to be at least a, a, a review of sorts. I mean, everybody else does. Uh, the uh, police chief, the fire chief, the uh, board of water supply manager, you know, um, and of course the city, the city council keeps checks on the mayor, right? So 
Oh, every everyone else does. Every other executive does, except the the, the prosecutor. Um, so maybe that needs to change a little bit. Yeah, but you have to ride herd on the commission. I mean, uh, <clears throat> if this is going to be like the police commission, I would not be encouraged. Uh, <laughs> it, it has to be somebody has to have oversight over the commissions, and uh, unless that happens, the commissions tend to go off the side. Am I right? Uh, to to some extent, yes. Um, you know that that's a that's a question unto itself. Uh, what to do about the not, now? You're talking about the police department, right? And the police commission. Um, that's a question unto itself. I mean, you know, on the one hand, you you've got the the mayor um, saying, "Look, I, there's only so much I can do. I can appoint the people, but then even then, I can't appoint them all." Um, and of course, the city council checks off on those appointees, but then what happens, right? Uh, again, those those are really tough questions. Um, I'm I'm not sure. You know, I I can tell you what what the answers are, but but I think for sure um, these folks need to get together uh, and talk about it and 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 figure it all out. And it's incumbent on us as as reporters to to make sure that uh, we keep their feet to the fire, you know, to do so. Yeah. Suffice to say, in any event, we need somebody to watch the prosecutor. That, that's that been made clear, not only in this administration, but before. So well, and hopefully, hopefully, again, with, with um, a new guy in there, you know, all, uh, there were seven candidates, I think, running for a prosecutor this year. And I, 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 I studied all of them to some extent. And every single one of them, of course, you know, raise the, the the need to 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 restore confidence in the department. The need to 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 make uh, changes there a priority. So let's hope, you know, collectively, you know, that energy can all be channeled to Steve Alm now, and he can he can help make some changes there. So <clears throat> Steve Alm is is uh, he was a judge before, but he's new now. Uh, the members of the council are new. The mayor is new, and. Uh, let me add that uh, the, the, uh, Tommy Waters is new. Um, he was in the ledge. Uh, now he's the council chair. I, I don't know what that means. What does that mean that he comes um, essentially with a legislative portfolio, but not a city council portfolio? And presto, after a contested election, as I recall, uh, he, he is now the, the chair of the city council. I, what, what are your thoughts about that? I think the, uh, I think putting Describing the uh, Trevor Ozawa Tommy Waters uh, election as as <laughs> contested would be putting it mildly. Uh, that that went to the Supreme Court, you know. Uh, finally, had need, needs to have a, a another election. Um, so that that was quite an ordeal, and and Tommy came through it as as the uh, as the council member for that district. Um, as a council member, you know. There's a big difference between the square building on the one side of the street and the square building on the other side of the street. Major, major difference uh, among council members and lawmakers. Um, some folks succeed when they come over from the legislature, others not so much um, because they're one of nine and they represent 100,000 people each at least. You know, even a state senator represents just a, just a small fraction of that. So the power that city council members have is just immense. Um, and I think the public often forgets that, you know, I'm the city hall reporter, so I kind of have a bias about that, but, but I think it's true. I mean, they, they, they really do have a lot of power and uh, we, we, you know, again, the reporters need to keep tabs on all of that. Um, as for Tommy Waters, um, I, think, uh, I think he's done okay, you know. Um, when he first got in, there was a lot of skepticism about how uh, he um, was buddies with the mayor. They both came into politics together in uh, the 2002 election. They both got into the House of Representatives and uh, uh, served together there as freshmen. So I, I think they did have a fairly you know, close relationship. Um, and so it was assumed that he would just uh, do the mayor's bidding, but it turns out he hasn't. Um, 
he, he's called out the mayor. Uh, I, I think the, the first uh, example of that was, was the, uh, the Alamoana Park issue, you know, which the mayor held firm on um, in terms of, of the, uh, the playground, the inclusive playground that uh, had been proposed, um, despite just, just massive blowback for that. And uh, Tommy Waters made it clear, no, we need to, to, to hear the public out on this. And I, I don't think the public wants this. Um, so, so that was the first example of that. Um, he's also been quite critical of, of the fire commission, I mean, excuse me, the fire department and also uh, the police department. So I, I, I think he can, he can, he's shown a, a somewhat independent streak um, in that sense. So, you know, uh, let's hope that continues. Let's hope he continues to ask tough questions uh, as well as the other uh, eight council members. Um, you want me to talk about the other members now a little bit or? Sure, please. Uh, well, I, you know, the more I think about it, the, the more I, I, I'm beginning to, to, to like the makeup. We haven't seen them yet. Uh, the new council takes, takes hold on January 2nd. Uh, we get sworn in that day along with the mayor. Um, We've got a pretty diverse cast of characters there. Um, I, I cynically call the, the city council, you know, the nine ring circus, um, <laughs> but we've got nine pretty distinctive acts here and, and uh, everybody's got, got um, a role to play here. Um, and, and each of them have their, bring their own strengths. So you got Esther Kiaina who worked in Washington. Um, so hopefully, uh, you know, she has that knowledge and experience and wealth of contacts to, 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 uh, to draw from. Um, of course, we've got Calvin Say, who, who, who uh, first ran for office when, when I, was, I wasn't even a teenager <laughs> living in his district in Palolo Valley. Um, but, uh, you know, he's got a wealth of experience. Um, he previously, uh, be, before becoming Speaker of the House, was uh, uh, the chair of the House Finance Committee for a number of years. And so he, he knows a thing or two about, you know, where to find things in a budget. Um, we, you've got uh, uh, Andrea Tupola, who, who uh, you know, certainly is a fierce voice, um, a strong advocate for the West Side. And uh, of course comes from Republican roots and is very proud of those roots and, 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 and philosophies. And, and we'll bring that perspective probably uh, as much as anyone. Um, and then of course we have, we have uh, Andrea, um, excuse me, we have uh, Augie Uba, Hoba, who, um, Augie T, um, who, who just has a completely fresh perspective. No, um, he, he's worked in government, but, uh, but kind of has just been on the fringes of it. Um, and of course is known mostly as a comic. So it'll, it'll be fun to, to, to cover him if nothing else. And finally, we have Radiant Cordero, who um, worked with uh, uh, poor Joey Manahan for a number of years. He brings a, she brings a, a, a fresh perspective, you know, a young perspective. That was a really cool race that, that, uh, that she was in. Three um, individuals who were all uh, under 35, I think, and uh, all who were rooted in that, you know, Kaliki community. Um, but anyway, uh, Back to Radiant, um, you know, Radiant's a, a, a good person, has, has a lot of knowledge, and I think will bring a, a fresh perspective as well. So it, it's going to be a fun group. To come yeah, well, it sounds encouraging somehow, you know, fresh perspective, uh, new people. Uh, they're not necessarily rooted in anything. Uh, <clears throat> hopefully they're all free thinkers. Uh, that, that'd be good. But um, we have a new mayor, and I uh, wanted your impressions on him. Uh, um, you know, he's, uh, he certainly has, he ran a good campaign. Um, he stayed above the fray in many ways. Um, and uh, you wonder what his, um, you know, what his, what his foibles are. Uh, you, have a, you have a sense of how, of, of how good a candidate he is, how good a mayor he'll be? Well, I, I, I think the public wanted, uh, folks with a, as we already discussed, a fresh perspective on things. They didn't uh, want Mufi Hanuman. They didn't want Colleen Hanabusa. They didn't want Kim Pine. Um, they didn't want Bud Stonebreaker, you know, folks who have been elected previously. Um, 
there there's a sentiment in the public that there needs to be fresh blood at City Hall. Um, and uh, Rick Blanchardi certainly brings that, you know, and, and the person who finished second, Keith Amamiya, brought that as well. Um, so we've got somebody who hasn't been in government. Um, so that said, there's going to be a steep learning curve. Um, he, he's he's going to have to get uh, educated on a lot of issues real quickly, and I'm sure he's, he's getting a, a crash course as we speak. Um, the fact that he hired Michael Formby as his uh, managing director, I think uh, bodes well. Um, you know, Mike uh, is well respected by, by, by most folks or everyone I've spoken to. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 think he, I think he has an integrity about him um, that, that uh, people like and an honesty about him. Um, and of course he knows his way around City Hall uh, as a uh, former director um, you know, he was with Hart as well. And of course he spent some time as city council member um, during uh, those five or six months when we we're waiting to hear what would happen with Ozawa and Waters. Um, again, small island, but, uh, but uh, so Mike was a good start. Um, the mayor is going to have to surround himself with, uh, with competent people, people who know what they're doing. And that's going to mean a mix of, of folks who, who, you know, may have some experience with the government already um, and knows how to navigate through the, through the different uh, uh, areas. Um, and then, of course, again, you, you, you want fresh perspective. Um, I think the other thing he uh, needs to do is make sure that he does not surround himself with folks who uh, just are yes people to him. And uh, he's promised to do that. You know, he comes from private business, and and there there seems to be a tendency, you would think, for for folks who have been in private business to surround themselves surround themselves with people who will support their position. Um, but you're not talking about anybody in Washington, are you, Gordon? <laughs> <laughs> well, possibly, but but you know, it goes way beyond that. You know. Um, I mean, people can be successful coming in from the outside, you know, completely cold and 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 uh, be successful navigating government. But you need to surround yourself with folks who know what they're doing, um, where the bathrooms are and and the back doors are in in the municipal building, the Kapolehale as well as City Hall. Um, so, you know, there's there's a uh, there's just so many intricacies to, to, to writing a government that uh, that that just being a business person alone is, is, is not going to be enough. I mean, he can bring that that perspective and it, and it will serve him well. I'm not saying that won't, you know, um, but but there's certainly a, a steep learning curve and uh, uh, it's uh, not going to help with with the worst of times right now with the pandemic going on. Yeah, well, on. that's the thing, you know. Um, so we have uh, a brand new city council, city council chair, brand new prosecutor, a brand new, well, the chief of police is not brand new, but, um, you know, in a sense she is. Um, and, um, and then we have a new mayor. And on top of that, if, if this happened in ordinary times, it would all be quite a challenge. They'd have to find out things, steep learning curve. But these are not ordinary times. We're still in crisis. We're in crisis over COVID. We're in crisis over the, the state economy, the city economy. Uh, we're in crisis over public confidence. We're in crisis over crime. Uh, we're in crisis over rail, like homelessness and um, a ban on plastic utensils. We have a crisis on that. I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Affordable housing um, and a fiscal crisis. All of this coming down at the same time to a, a whole bunch of people who haven't who haven't held public office necessarily, and who haven't worked together necessarily. So query, what are the priorities? If you were gonna you know, try to help them, what would you say they should pay attention to first and second and third? Well, I'd say the first priority, first of all, is just dealing with the current COVID situation and uh, making sure it doesn't get any worse. Um, but of course, you know, there's there's been that tug and pull um, 
that's already happening and is going to continue to happen between, you know, suffering businesses and, and, and people who are dying, you know, um, nobody wants to see businesses go. Uh, so it's, it's a, it's a tough, uh, you know, tough line to, to, to stay in the middle of. Um, so the, that's first, just dealing with the pandemic, uh, and making sure it doesn't get any worse. Well, that's, that's a real the, risk. Health, don't you think, health things as well as the, the business side of things. That's a real risk. I mean, they've been, a lot of people have been out of work for a long time. A lot of businesses have failed permanently and are still daily failing permanently. Um, a lot of people on the streets, they don't have food, they're desperate. Um, <clears throat> and, and there's every indication, vaccine or no, uh, that you know, over the next six months, including the six months from, from January 2nd, uh, are gonna be in desperate straits. Absolutely. And, and, the, and the city has the greatest responsibility because the city is the one on the streets, so to speak. Uh, Absolutely. So it's not just dealing with a, a static challenge. It's dealing with a challenge that could get, maybe will get worse every day. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so, so first priority is, is, is uh, making sure this does not get any worse. Uh, and then there's a recovery plan, which I think the planning needs to start now and I'm sure is happening now. Uh, how do we bring things back and, and how do we bring things back effectively? I mean, I, I think we've seen the, the hotel struggle with that, you know, how much and what do we reopen or what just makes sense to open? I think all, all the businesses are, are, are feeling that does it make sense to open, pay my expenses and, and hope people come um, come uh, come use my services and, and products. Um, so, you know, those, those are all issues I think that that uh, that need to be dealt with. And, and, and so that would be the second priority, I think. Um, third priority, I think is going to be the budget, and which is also COVID related. Uh, you know, how are they going to deal deal with the shortfall? Um, the Caudill administration uh, report reported last month, you know, it's going to be a $400 million shortfall. Uh, that's a healthy chunk of money. Um, and the fact that uh, they need to budget for rail does not uh, help the situation. I mean, um, the original uh, amount budgeted was 140 to 160 million for operations and maintenance in the first year. So the, the bad news is, uh, Rail probably is not going to get underway at the end of 2021, as everyone expected, or as everyone had had been told. Uh, but the good news is that means the city can probably save some money that it can divert elsewhere. Um, I think I think that's been one of the, the biggest challenges that that people have been talking about is is just uh, how how are you going to deal with all of that. Yeah. Was it, does it change your view at all that Pete Buttigieg is going to be the director, the secretary of transportation under Joe Biden? I, I honestly, I, 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 I'm sorry, I was doing other things this morning. Did, did that just get announced? Wow. Pete Buttigieg, huh? Okay, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Not, 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 not quite, I'll be quite honest with you. I, I have no idea what that's going to, to mean. It's going to be different. That's all we know. It's <laughs> and maybe and maybe more sympathetic to Hawaii. I mean, after all, mass transit is very important. Although these days, ridership around the country is way down because nobody wants to get in a room with strangers. You know. But uh, since we're on the issue of rail, um, I, I guess that's the big big question mark at this point. Is um, how do you proceed from here? I think um, to, to say uh, we're just gonna stop construction and halt it where it's at uh, is not something that a majority of, 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 of folks are gonna be okay with. Although, you know, I know there's a lot of anger out there, but you know, this just can't be left standing there after all the money that was spent. Um, people need to, to, to to uh, factor in the fact that, you know, the federal government uh, in its uh, decision to, to grant one and a half billion dollars for this project, um, 
needed it to be done or it's supposed to get the money back. Now, on top of that, you've got contracts that have already been signed um, and you've, you've purchased properties along the way. You've got, you know, half built tracks along the way. All of those stopping it where it is is going to have consequences. So, um, but the question is, how, how do you proceed from here? I think uh, there seems to be consensus now, finally, between Hart and the Caldwell administration, at least, that things need to be segmented. Let's build it uh, in a fashion so that you know we build it based on how much money we know we're going to have, which I think might have been part of the problem. Uh, in all this. Of course, nobody expected a pandemic to, to factor into all this as well. Um, so anyway, so that, that that's another big issue for- uh, well, I think that's a huge issue because just as the these three things you've mentioned are all interrelated, uh, the, 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 the financial fiscal issue is related to really everything. Yes. And for example, we have, we have sea level rise. It's inevitable, it's inexorable. It's going to be coming up the shores. We have to be taking steps. We have extreme weather coming down the pike. You can quote me on that. Uh, and, and one of these days- Some people will. <laughs> one of these days, we're, we're going to have a huge storm and a huge expense in fixing it up, fixing things up. And uh, you know, query, are we prepared for that? So my, my final question to you, Gordon, is, <clears throat> Should we be looking forward to a humongous tax increase, property tax increase by the city? Well, <laughs> um, the major political candidates all promise there would not be. Um, I, I don't think I'm in a position to, to, to answer the question, quite honestly. I know I'm sounding like a politician, but, but I, 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 I I just don't know. Um, you know, the current mayor insists that uh, the city does not need furloughs, um, but that I'm a little cynical about, especially when you've got the state, you know, doing the same with uh, more than ten thousand of its of its employees. Um, so that's going to factor into things uh, uh, big time. Um, and, uh, and that again comes back to uh, a brand new mayor who needs to deal with the uh, very powerful and influential uh, government worker unions in, in town, HGEA and, and uh, UPWD and, and Shopo being the, uh, the main ones for and HFFA uh, for, for, for the, uh, the city. Um, so those are gonna be things that um, I think we're gonna have to watch. Uh, to, to see see how how those machinations you know play out um, it, it'll be fascinating to watch it just just how what comes out of them um, of those four unions uh, the only one that endorsed the uh, Blanjardi was uh, Shopo um, UPW and HGA endorsed uh, Amamiya uh, and uh, uh, I think HFFA stayed out of it if I recall Forgive me if I'm wrong, but but in any case, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of dynamics uh, play into this and 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 how things end up, um, because again, the the union the union contracts are, are, you know, I don't need to tell you, are a big deal. Um, they make up a, uh, a big part of the the city budget, uh, as much as sixty percent. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, because you know we're not dealing with uh, uh, just just their pay, but their benefits, as well as their health insurance, you know, their health insurance, other benefits, um, sick leaves and, and uh, retirements uh, and, and, and everything that comes with retirement. Um, the unions have been very successful in, 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 uh, in making sure their, their uh, employees are well taken care of. Um, so we'll see what, uh, comes about now with, with this new mayor and uh, what, what he'll be able to, to do with the, uh, the unions on this. Hopefully everybody will play nice, understand realities and you know, come through this in, in something that, that is relatively uh, am amenable to, to, to most of us. Yeah, and knock wood, there won't be a lot of fiscal surprises for us. But let me add that 
<clears throat> that uh, Rick Blanchardi uh, ran a good he ran a good railroad uh, with uh, KGB Hawaii News. Now uh, they made money. They knew how to run a tight ship. And um, if he brings that to government, it'll be it'll be helpful, useful, impressive, um, and maybe it'll you know prepare us better for the challenges to come. And well, no Gordon, question, that's going to serve him well. Yeah, sorry. Gordon, it's been great to talk to you. Really has. I, I, you're, you're such a you're a very refreshing guy. What can I say? Gordon Pang, Star Advertiser, uh, lovely show. Aloha.